Blood. It's something we all have, and yet it holds so many mysteries. We all know there are different blood types, A, B, O, and A, B. But today, we're going to talk about the rarest one of them all. Type A, B. It's the least common blood type in the world, and it comes with some very bizarre facts you probably never knew. Now, before we get into the weird stuff, let's keep it simple. There are four main blood types, A, B, A, B, and O. These types are based on the presence or absence of certain proteins called antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. Think of these antigens like ID tags. They tell your immune system, hey, I belong here. Type A blood has A antigens. Type B has B antigens. Type O has neither. But AB, it has both A and B antigens. That's already pretty unique, but it's just the beginning. Only about 4% of people in the world have AB blood. That means out of 100 people, maybe four have this blood type. In some parts of the world, like Japan or Korea, it's slightly more common, but it's still rare everywhere. And because of that, people with AB blood have been the subject of curiosity, myths, and even personality theories for decades. One of the most fascinating things about AB blood is how it plays into blood donation. If you have AB blood, you're in a very weird position. You're considered a universal plasma donor, but also a universal red blood cell recipient. Let me break that down. If you need a blood transfusion and you have AB blood, you can receive red blood cells from any other blood type, AB, AB, or O. That's a huge advantage, especially in emergency situations. Doctors don't need to scramble to find a perfect match because you're already compatible with everyone. But here's the twist. When it comes to donating blood, things flip. AB red blood cells can only be given to other people with AB blood. And remember, only 4% of people have that type. So AB blood donors are kind of stuck in a small group. Their blood is valuable but limited in who can use it. However, the plasma from AB blood that's a whole different story. A B plasma doesn't have any antibodies against A or B blood. That means it's safe to give to anyone, regardless of their blood type. So in that way, A B plasma donors are universal. Hospitals love this because it makes A B plasma incredibly useful in trauma situations, where they need to act fast and don't have time to match types. Now let's get into the origins of A B blood. This is where things start to get a little bizarre. AB is the newest of the major blood types. While types A, B, and O have been around for thousands and thousands of years, AB is believed to have only emerged in the last 1,000 to 1,200 years. That's actually very recent in human history. Most scientists believe AB blood appeared as a result of mixing between populations with A and B blood types, probably in areas where different ethnic groups started to intermarry and have children. So AB blood might not just be rare, it might be a sign of human migration, blending, and evolution over time. In other words, it's the genetic proof that people from different backgrounds were coming together and starting new communities. Some researchers think the spread of AB blood may have started around the time of the Mongol Empire, when populations across Asia and Europe began to mix. That's still up for debate, but it's one possible explanation for why AB blood appeared so suddenly compared to the others. Another strange truth about AB blood, it's a little mysterious when it comes to the immune system. Because people with AB blood have both A and B antigens, their immune systems are less likely to attack foreign red blood cells. That means they're at lower risk of having an immune reaction during a blood transfusion. That's why AB is called the universal recipient for red blood cells. It plays nice with everyone else's blood. But there's a flip side. Because AB blood is so rare, it's harder to find matches when AB people need to donate. In disasters or emergencies, that can become a serious issue. If someone with AB blood loses a lot of blood and there's not enough universal donor blood, like O negative, on hand, things can get complicated. Now let's take a short detour into something a little strange. Blood type personality theories. In Japan and South Korea, there's a long-standing belief that your blood type can influence your personality. Kind of like astrology, but with biology. According to this theory, AB types are thought to be complex, mysterious, and creative, but also a little unpredictable or two-faced. Why two-faced? 
Well, the idea is that because AB people have both A and B antigens, they supposedly show traits from both A and B personality types. Some people say they're charming and artistic, but also hard to read or hard to trust. Of course, there's no real science behind any of this. It's more of a cultural thing, but it shows how rare blood types like AB have captured people's imagination. In some parts of Asia, people have even been hired or rejected for jobs based on their blood type. It's not as common today, but for a long time it was a real thing. There were even blood type dating apps. If you were AB, people either wanted to date you because you were seen as unique, or avoid you because you were considered difficult. Again, none of this is backed by real science, but it goes to show how something as simple as blood type can shape the way people see themselves and each other. Now let's get back to the facts. People with AB blood also tend to have higher levels of certain clotting factors. This means their blood may clot slightly faster than other types. That's a good thing if you get a cut, it helps stop bleeding quickly. But some research suggests it might also come with a slightly higher risk of blood clots in certain situations, like after surgery or during long flights. It's not a massive risk, but it's something doctors consider when planning treatment or medication. There's also some evidence that people with AB blood may have a higher risk of certain memory problems later in life. A 2014 study found that people with AB blood were more likely to develop cognitive issues like dementia than people with other blood types. Scientists aren't totally sure why, but it might be related to how blood type affects the way blood clots and flows in the brain. Now, it's important not to panic. Having AB blood doesn't mean you're destined to have health problems, but it does show how your blood type can connect to way more than just transfusions. Even your gut health might be linked to your blood. That's right, some studies have shown that different blood types are more likely to have certain types of gut bacteria. AB blood types tend to have a mix of the kinds of bacteria found in both A and B types. That can affect digestion, metabolism, and maybe even how your immune system responds to infections. We're still learning more about this, but it's an exciting area of research. And here's one last surprising fact for now. AB blood types are rarest among humans, but they're also rare in animals. Most animals don't use the same blood typing system we do, but when scientists test primates and some other mammals, AB-like traits are extremely uncommon. That makes us wonder, why does AB exist at all? Why did it show up in humans, but almost nowhere else in the animal kingdom? It's questions like that that make blood type AB so fascinating. It's rare, it's recent in human history, and it behaves very differently from the other types. So far, we've talked about how AB blood is rare, how it behaves differently from other types, and how it might even influence things like your immune system, memory, and gut bacteria. But now, it's time to look even deeper. Because the story of AB blood isn't just rare or quirky, it's also incredibly important in medicine and science. Let's start with organ donation. When it comes to organ transplants, blood type matters a lot. You can't just put any organ in any body. The immune system is picky, and if it sees something it doesn't recognize, it'll attack it. That's called rejection. And one of the first things doctors look at when matching a donor and recipient is a blood type. Now here's where AB blood gets interesting. Again, people with AB blood can receive organs from any other blood type in many cases, just like they can with blood transfusions. That makes them universal recipients when it comes to some kinds of transplants like liver and kidney. That's a huge advantage. If you have AB blood and you're waiting for a donor organ, your chances of finding a match are better than most people. But again, donating organs if you're AB is harder because so few people have that blood type. So the total pool of AB donors is small. In other words, having AB blood is kind of a medical superpower, but only when you're on the receiving end. Next, let's talk about disease risk. Over the years, scientists have found some surprising links between blood type and different diseases. And while the research is still ongoing, there are a few patterns worth knowing about if you have AB blood. For example, studies have shown that people with non-O blood types, so that's A, B, and AB, are at slightly higher risk for heart disease and blood clots. One theory is that these blood types cause the blood to be a little stickier, meaning it clots more easily. That can be good for stopping bleeding, but not so good if it leads to clots in your arteries or veins. People with AB blood may also have a higher risk of gastric cancer, cancer of the stomach. 
Again, we don't know all the reasons why, but it could be related to how AB blood types respond to infections, especially a common one called Helicobacter pylori, a bacteria linked to ulcers and stomach cancer. There's also some evidence that AB blood might be linked to a higher risk of cognitive decline, especially in older adults. A study published in the journal Neurology found that people with AB blood were more likely to have problems with memory and thinking. The researchers think it could be connected to clotting factors in the blood or blood flow in the brain. But again, this is still being studied. Now, does that mean AB blood is dangerous? Not at all. It just means that your blood type might give doctors a little more insight into your health, and that could help in the future as we move toward more personalized medicine. In fact, that's where this story starts to take a more hopeful turn. Doctors and scientists are now using blood type along with your genes and medical history to figure out what treatments might work best for you. This is called precision medicine, and it's one of the most exciting trends in healthcare right now. For example, some cancer treatments might be more or less effective depending on your blood type. Some vaccines might create stronger immune responses depending on your type too. And one day we might even be able to predict disease risk or medication side effects based on blood type. It's not science fiction, it's already happening in small ways. And when it comes to AB blood, researchers are paying attention. Because it's rare, it stands out in studies. And because it behaves differently, it helps scientists ask better questions. Why does AB blood respond this way? What makes it different from A or B? Could we learn something that helps everyone? Another place where AB blood is making waves is in stem cell research. Stem cells from people with AB blood are highly valuable for certain experiments and therapies. Because AB blood is less likely to cause immune reactions, it's sometimes used in creating universal stem cell lines that could be used for treatments in the future. It's early stage science, but the potential is huge. Now let's shift gears for a second and talk about something unexpected, evolution. As we mentioned earlier, AB blood is the youngest of the main blood types. It likely appeared only about 1,000 years ago, which is super recent in evolutionary terms. That raises an interesting question. Why did AB blood show up at all? Some scientists believe AB blood might have developed as a kind of immunological balance. Because AB people have both A and B antigens, their immune systems are more tolerant. They're less likely to produce antibodies that attack foreign cells. In ancient times, when humans started living in denser communities, trading and mixing, this might have been a survival advantage. It's possible that AB blood was nature's way of helping people adapt to more exposure to new germs, foods, and environments. Maybe it made them more resistant to certain illnesses, or maybe it helped them survive infections that would have been deadly to others. We don't know for sure, but the idea is fascinating. And there's more. Because AB blood combines traits from both A and B, it may also show unique responses to stress. Some early studies suggest that people with AB blood might produce more cortisol, the stress hormone, in certain situations. That could affect everything from blood pressure to sleep. But again, this is still being researched, and it's not something to worry about. It's just one more piece of the puzzle. Now, before we wrap up, let's talk about the future. There's a lot of research happening right now around the blood types and how they connect to everything from cancer to viruses to aging. During the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, some studies suggested that blood type might affect how people respond to the virus. People with type O were found to have a slightly lower risk of infection, while those with AB or A might have had a slightly higher risk of severe illness. These findings aren't final, and there's still a lot to understand, but it's one more way your blood type might matter in ways you never expected. And then there's the idea of synthetic blood. Scientists are working on creating artificial blood that could be used in hospitals when real blood is in short supply. If they crack the code, it could be a game changer for rare blood types like AB. It might also mean people with AB blood could one day receive even better, more customized care. So what's the big takeaway here? Type AB blood is rare. It's unusual. It behaves differently. But it's not just a fun fact. It's part of a much bigger story about how we're learning to understand the human body, personalize healthcare, and even trace our evolution as a species. If you have AB blood, you're in a small club. Your blood can receive from anyone, your plasma can help everyone, and scientists are still learning all the ways your body works a little differently. And if you don't have AB blood, that's okay too. Every blood type tells a story. But this one, AB, is definitely one of the most bizarre, most recent, and most interesting chapters in the book of human biology. Thanks for sticking around for the full journey. We hope you learned something new and maybe even see blood a little differently now. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and take care of your body. It's got more secrets than you know.